There are two versions of this video, the short version that you're watching right now, and a longer version over on Take 2. If you're after the short, somewhat concise version, stay here. If you're after the longer, more rambly, chatty version, follow the link below, or up in the corner of the video. Hello, and welcome to the garage. I'd say workshop, but I think Ed China has that kinda covered. And his is bigger than mine. It has been quite a while since I have sat here at the desk with an inverter and talked to you about the gradual progress I've been making on making my Morris Minor electric. To give you a quick recap, I have been planning to build a conversion of my Morris Minor using the open inverter board from Damien Maguire. This is an open inverter board and it's installed in a Toyota inverter from a Yaris. And you might be thinking, well, that's great for driving a hybrid engine, but what you can actually do with it is you can fit one of these boards to it and you can convert it into an inverter that can drive an electric motor. The process has been a little bit more involved than I was expecting. I think I didn't really understand at the beginning that the instructions uh, on the wiki still need a lot of work and I've been putting in a little bit here and there just to try and help clarify some things as I've gone through them but it's an open source project so anyone can chip in and I know that documentation is often the weak point of open source projects and so it has proven for me uh, along with my lack of experience which quite honestly has been responsible for a number of problems the first of which was the first inverter. See, it's difficult to tell when it looks like this, but this is not in fact the inverter with which I started. In the lower half of the body here, there are some capacitors which operate at the voltage of your battery. So they'd be running right at their limit. Finding the capacitors, that took a little while. Uh, there aren't any specs published, so I had to kind of take a best guess stab at it. And then finding a capacitor that I could buy in units of less than 10,000, that took quite a lot longer. When I eventually decided on capacitor, got it sent to the house, arrived, I set to trying to remove the original capacitors from the board. I managed to delaminate the board. That was an expensive mistake. I did spend a little bit of time considering whether I could just kind of work around it, but it's a multi-layer board and I didn't know whether there were other layers that were damaged. It just, you know, the idea of building the whole car up and then having it go bang for that stupid reason for a $60 part just wasn't worth it. So it took me a while. I finally got this inverter. Uh, and at the same time, I ordered one of these which is a desoldering gun. Using that, removing the capacitors was easy. That is the best hundred dollars I have spent in tools for a long time. It was awesome. Then I managed to replace those capacitors. You also have to replace, I think it's four resistors. That's all documented uh, in various places in the wiki, the forum, and then there's also a little video on the internet of someone doing it. Got that done, put it back together, and then Building up the open inverter was great. Followed the instructions, it worked perfectly. Basically first time, turned it on, did exactly what it should, got blinking lights, great. Then came doing this side of the inverter and that is actually the thing that took the most time because separating the two halves was incredibly difficult. After quite a lot of time, I had the great idea of just using a heat gun. So I differentially heated it. I heated the top and near the seal with the heat gun, not an enormous amount, and left this bottom half, which has a big casting on it, cold. That was enough. I got it apart in a few minutes. I wish I'd thought of it earlier. It went really well. Changing the board is very simple. Swapping the board over is basically unplug a few things, undo a few bolts, pop the new board in, which has gone great. So with this board replaced, the next thing that you need to do is replace the connector that comes out of the end of the inverter. So there are a bunch of 3D printed parts that you can use to replace that connector along with a connector that you can just buy off the shelf. Uh, this, for example, is one of them. Um, excuse the quality of the printing. I changed the spool on there and didn't bother to change any of the settings. It's going in a car. I don't really care. I'll clean it up. 
but this this goes on the outside of the inverter and then inside that is an amp seal connector and an amp seal connector is something you can just buy one off off the shelf and it has a component that goes in the car that that goes outside the inverter this is the the side that plugs into the amp seal connector the other half has been a little bit tricky to get hold of so this is a, a 90 degree amp seal connector because i ordered not one but two of these but i've spent a long time trying to get hold of the right one of these uh, it's made more complicated because they are pairs this one is not a match pair and they don't go together and they won't fit together very well i have spent a long time looking for a matched pair that was under a hundred dollars um, eventually I found a company in China that is shipping me one and that's why we are stopping at this point for the moment and you're not seeing it full and complete and closed. Um, unfortunately then we come to my next moment of truly epic stupidity and I can't really overstate how foolish this was. So I thought I had the pinout in front of me for the amp seal connector. And then I connected the power to this daughter board and smoked part of the daughter board. Thankfully, what I did is actually I connected the power straight to ground. Nothing smoked on the board and the board is still telling me everything is working. So I believe it's working. I have to run a whole bunch of wire on this to make up for the error um which is a let's say it's a distressing state of affairs for someone who likes to think that they know at least vaguely what they're doing but you know i'm not above admitting stupidity so uh, in future no don't do that so that brings me to what's next well part of what's next is waiting for this connector as soon as i get that in there's a couple of other things i need to do this wireless daughter board, ideally I should move out onto um, something outside the inverter casing because unsurprisingly the inverter casing acts as a big shield and you can't really get the signal out. I've got a whole big pile of 3D prints to clean up. So that's one of the tasks to do over the next few days. And mainly these are things that go outside or on the inverter that are plugs for the holes in the casing that we're not using, things like that. Now, the other thing I need to do is just like the inverter connector is made of unobtainium, so is the connector on the motor. Um, it's actually discontinued. I mean, the motor is getting on for 10 years old, so it's not entirely surprising. But even when it was available, apparently it was tricky to get hold of. So I have these, which are automotive grade connectors, which have a little seal in them. Um, and so the plan is there's a 3D printable part that you can use to replace the existing connector on the motor. Um, and then I'll put a, just a cable coming out of it with this dangling off it. Um, and then we'll be able to connect the motor up. And then, and this is quite exciting, I should be able to use this to make the motor turn and that's when things get fun so the next video should be this assembled powered up and connected to a motor with the motor spinning other people have done some of the work that I need to do there as well they've identified some of the things about the motor that I need to know to get it connected up and working I'm really looking forward to it I'm really excited, but also I'm aware it's probably going to be quite a while until the next video. So looking forward to seeing you all next time. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll be back with more hopefully soon. I'll be back with more of my regular videos soon. Anyway, um, I don't have my teleprompter, so teleprompter. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to Transport Evolved and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure that it lets you know when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right 
for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters, and thanks to the inverter for continuing to blink all through this video. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, that's Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, David Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, and Denny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. It's Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hensley, and of course, Ian. Feeling left out? You can join our sponsors and Patreons down at the link below. Hit the join button below to support us on YouTube or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi or our cool swag store. Links are below. As always, thanks for joining me and keep evolving.